Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of my sheet load rewind series where I revisit a past sheet load of cards, sometimes update a little bit, sometimes just make a new set of cards. If you ever want to see more of these rewind videos, make sure to check out the playlist linked in the description box below. This month, we're rewinding back to the March 2021 sheet load of cards edition. This originally called for two 12 by 12 pattern papers, three card stocks for matting and sentiment, and six card stocks for your 12 total card bases. Well, today, what I'm going to do is using one piece of pattern paper and some clear card bases is show you how to make six quick and easy clear cards. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download the printable for free if you don't already have this one in your collection. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'll be using today. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Instead of using two pieces of pattern paper today, I'm going to be using a single double-sided piece that I fell in love with when I was at my local scrapbook store recently. This is from Paper Rose and it's called Rainbow Twirl 2.0 E. When I cut this piece, it's pretty much going to follow the original instructions, but for piece B, I'm going to cut those to one and a quarter inches tall versus one and a half inches. I do cut off the branding strip at the bottom of the pattern paper first, then I rotate it so it's sitting back portrait or the direction that it goes, and I cut three columns that were three and three quarters inches wide. Now I'm going to take two of those and cut them into three pieces that are three and three quarters inches tall. Just a reminder that you don't need to try to remember any of these dimensions or write them down. I will tell you later how you can download the free printable. On the remaining column, I'm going to cut that into six pieces that are one and a quarter inches tall. For me, so I can move my paper right to left, I'm using the measurement to the left of my cut line. I did keep a hold of that scrap at the end. I might use it later to decorate the insides. Following the original instructions would yield you 12 cards, but because I use one piece, I'm going to get six cards today. Now because of this, I do need to flip over half of the pieces that I just cut. Now you could definitely look at the other sides of all of them to see if there's one that you prefer, but I just went ahead and kept the top three kind of the watercolor and the bottom three the pretty leafy pattern. For my card bases, I'm going to be using clear cardstock. So I got out three sheets of that, and I'm just going to show you how I cut and fold one piece. It is kind of hard to see on camera, but I sliced that to four and a quarter by 11 inches, and then I can just fold this with my fingers. Now to make it stand up, you do want to get a nice fold there, so I did burnish that with my fingernails. If you would like to see more of my clear cards, I'll have my playlist below, and I will also link the clear card Q&A where I discuss more about what I use and kind of answer some questions that viewers had about clear cards. For today's set of clear cards, I'm going to make a smaller inner card to go in the card base. This will give me a place to write a personal message since it would be hard to write on the clear card stock. What I did was I added up the height of the two pattern paper pieces and again this will be a little bit smaller than what the sketch on the front shows and those pieces added up to five inches tall. So I'm going to take three pieces of white cardstock, cut strips that are three and three quarters inches wide and then ten inches tall. That way when I go to fold these, which I will do later, but when I fold them it's three and three quarters by five inches and it leaves a nice border on the inside of that card base about a quarter inch all the way around. The original printable calls for some die cut or punch circles, but since I'm decorating mine a little bit differently, 
All I need for CS1 is one sheet, and really you could use scraps for this. I'm going to cut three strips off the bottom that are one inch tall, and then I do have a suggestion to add a border punch to the bottom. Now if you don't want to do the border punch, just cut this to about half inch tall, and later they will be cut down to go on the card fronts. Now I am going to hang on to this piece of blueberry card sock because I will use that for sentiments and decoration later. For the inner cards, I brought in my score buddy and put a couple scores at the 5 inch mark and then folded that with my hands and reinforced the fold with the bone folder. And you'll see here now that when it goes inside the clear card, there's just a nice border all the way around. It will make it kind of look like that inner card is floating when it's standing up. I finished scoring and folding the rest of those, and just a heads up that if you don't have a scoring tool, you could definitely just fold these inner cards by hand. Now all of the pieces for the card are cut so we can start assembling. To do this, I'm going to add two of the pattern paper pieces to the front of that inner card. The large square one goes at the top aligned with the fold and the smaller skinny strip goes at the bottom. I do bump it right up against that first pattern paper and try to make sure that they are aligned on the sides. Now there is a place where they meet and that's why you want to bump them right up against each other and later when I decorate the front we will add the scallop punch strip which we haven't made yet but I'll show you in a minute to the front to kind of cover that up. I finished adhering the rest of the pattern papers, and while I do that, I thought I would ask you, what is your experience with clear cards? Let me know in the comment section below. Have you never made one? Have you made some a few times? Or do you like to make them all the time like me? I'm always curious. The original sketch called for some rounded corners and for my cards today, it would be that inner card, the bottom part. Now you definitely don't have to do this, you could skip this. But for me, I like to add some rounded corners every once in a while. So I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and using the quarter inch side, I added those rounded edges to the bottom. Let me know below how you feel about rounded corners. I know some people really don't like them. Once those corners were rounded, it was time to put the inner cards on the inside of my clear card base. When I do this, I do like to usually pull in a piece of recycle paper because it's a lot easier to see the edge of the clear card stock that way. I added adhesive to the back of the inner card and then I'm carefully going to place it where I think there are even borders before I press that harder into place. And here you'll see how that opens. It still stands up and now my personal message will be hidden from the front. I finished adding those inner cards off camera and here's a look at all six. Now it's time to decorate the front, and I'm going to start by making that scalloped edge. Now I will be using a border punch, but if you have edger dies or scissors, you could always use something different. This is a vintage Stampin' Up! punch. It is one that I will probably never let go of. I ran each of those three pieces of cardstock through it, and you'll see I have just a nice little scallop border at the bottom. And now I'm going to take these and cut them in half to four and a quarter inches wide. Later, these will fill the clear card base from left to right. And speaking of clear card bases, it's time to bring those back in and get our scallop strips added. I will be adding these to the front of the clear card base. That way we get some, we get the look of added dimension and layers, but it doesn't add any extra thickness to the card really. I added some ATG or tape runner to the back of this piece and got it placed across the front. Now you'll want to make sure that you like the height of where your scallop piece goes, I wanted to make sure that I could see as much of pattern paper piece B as possible, so I did move it up as far as I could that still covered up the gap between or where those two pattern papers met. Now for the remaining cards, to make it a little bit easier to line up the left side, I did bring in my score buddy and I used that ledge at the bottom to help me line everything up. 
Hey guys, it's Editing Alicia here, and after I was going back over my voiceover, I noticed that I forgot to point something out that I wanted to during that part. You'll see here that from the inside of the card, or from the back of the front of the card, you can see the adhesive on this. I get asked a lot how I hide the adhesive on the inside, but honestly, I don't. Now if that's something that bothers you, you could add another scallop strip to the back of the inside to cover that. But if you're worried about people saying something like, oh, I don't like seeing the adhesive, rarely do we look at the inside back of the cover. And if somebody is going to be that picky, maybe they don't deserve a handmade card. That's just my two cents. To finish decorating the front of the card, I'm going to be using this die cut hello sentiment. I'm going to cut the letters out of blueberry and the shadow out of white. I also grabbed kind of a leafy viney die from my stash and I'll be cutting that from the blueberry as well. I took that off camera and here's a look at all of the die cut pieces. Now normally I am not a fan of sentiments where you have to add each individual letter. But if you watch my advent series from last December, you know that I fell in love with this Hello die from the Spellbinders advent calendar. So I did decide to use this today. I held each of the letters with reverse tweezers while I added liquid glue to the back and then I placed it onto the shadow. Because I used liquid glue, I did have a little bit of wiggle time to try to get nice white even borders. I finished adhering those off camera so you didn't have to watch that and I also figured out where I wanted my sentiment and the little leafy die cut piece to go on my card. So that's what I did next just following that sample I made. I added the leafy die cut to the inside of the card over on the right and then I added the die cut hello to the front to the left and I had all of the letters sit right on the top of that scallop border strip except the H the little tail hung down a little bit below. I finished decorating all of the cards in the same way. You know I usually like to add some sparkle or bling, but really the clear cardstock does make the cards shine a little more. So once those were finished, I had six clear cards, and here are some close-up looks. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these six clear cards using the March 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable for yourself. If you would like to make cards with the March 2021 sheet load of cards printable, please make sure before you click on the link, which I'll tell you where it's at here in just a minute, that you have already clicked on that subscribe button below. That is the one thing I ask before you download the free printable. It's free, it's quick, and it's easy. Also, before I tell you where the link is, I want to tell you about a new page one that you might notice on this file that wasn't there previously. Unfortunately, because of misuse and missharing, I have had to add this page. Not only does it give you information on how to use my printable appropriately, but it also gives you some printing tips. So make sure that you pay attention to those if you're trying to download it and print it. Some of you are getting these pages printing really small because of the addition of this first page, but all of these suggestions here should help you get that figured out. Now, if you don't have a printer, you can always just open this and view it on screen. You're gonna find the link to this March 2021 sheet load of cards down in the description box below my product list. Below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. I hope you have a fun time getting crafty with the printable. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. 
And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.